I present to you the case for the base mount. Besides the new smaller design, M4 chip, and new baseline of 16 gigs of unified memory, there is one crazy thing about the new Mac Mini that we have to talk about, and that thing is its price. In fact, it is the same price as the outgoing M2 Mac Mini, but with this much more power and the bump in baseline RAM from 8 to 16 gigabytes, we've got a lot to talk about. For 599 US dollars, this is one of the best deals in computing, hands down, Mac or not. But sticking with an Apple to Apple comparison, let's just take a quick walk down memory lane at all the attempts Apple has made in the past to create a small but powerful computer with their launch prices adjusted for inflation. The Apple Macintosh launch price was $2,500 US in 1984. Inflation adjusted, that's about $7,600 in purchasing power today. Even the maxed out 2024 Mac Mini M4 Pro comes in well under that. The Apple Power Mac G4 Cube launch price was $1,800 in the year 2000, which is about $3,300 purchasing power in today's dollars. And remember, that's for the base model. So today's base model, costs five and a half times less. And most interesting for this comparison is that in 2006, the first Intel Mac mini launched at just 599 US dollars. So that's the same as today, right? Except when you factor in the inflation over the past 18 years. That means even though it's the same price on paper, the purchasing power of having the G4 Mac mini at 599 back then in 2006 would be more like dropping $1,000 on an M4 Mac mini base model today. When adjusted for inflation 18 years later, this M4 Mac mini is nearly half the price. And oh, I don't know, a million times more powerful than the Intel Core Solo? But enough of the blast from the past. This M4 base model machine for 599 US dollars might be an amazing deal, but it's just the base model, right? What can you really do with just the base model? Well, depending on your use case, you might need to order your new Mac mini with some upgraded specs. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't know that you're going to need those upgrades, you're probably going to be fine with the base model. The 2024 base model already comes with the M4 chip. It already comes with 16 gigs of unified RAM now, but the base storage seems to be the sticking point for most people. Coming with only 256 gigs of storage in 2024 is a bit harsh. Like seriously, Apple? 500 gigs should be the minimum these days. Even stranger than how little you get for the base model storage in 2024 is just how expensive the storage upgrades are from Apple. This isn't unique to this particular Apple device. Apple storage upgrades have always been egregious, but when you're talking about this budget price point at 599 US dollars for the whole computer and the cost of an optional two terabyte boot drive costs more than the whole computer at 800 US dollars from Apple, it just makes you shrink away from upgrading the storage at all. It's like Apple doesn't want you to upgrade the storage on this thing, which, you know, maybe we're onto something because storage is definitely a problem we can solve. The new M4 Mac mini comes with three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. This means we can use the high bandwidth Thunderbolt 4 ports to connect super fast external storage, which is fine by me, not only since it's cheaper per gigabyte, but because if your workflow is anything like mine, it might actually be more convenient to use external drives. Not more convenient than if Apple would just lower the price of their storage upgrades or give more base storage for the same price in the first place, but more convenient nonetheless. I know I don't really have to explain external storage to you guys, but it's the same story for a lot of people. It's like Apple is telling us, hey, stop putting literally everything on your desktop and start getting organized with your files and start backing things up while you're at it, either by paying for iCloud storage, which I'm sure Apple would prefer you do, or by using external storage devices or network attached storage like my Synology NAS and only paying for as much internal storage on your boot drive as you know you're going to need. And let's be real, I don't know anyone who has an eight terabyte boot drive, Mac or not. If you know you are absolutely going to need an upgraded storage option for your internal boot drive directly from Apple, then I'm sure you know how much you're going to have to pay for it because you've probably done it before. But back to the base model. The only things on my boot drive are the OS itself and the core apps that I use for my productivity like Logic Pro for music editing and DaVinci Resolve for video editing. So past that, all my other files are on external drives or my network attached storage. Long story short, even though I don't agree with Apple's egregious internal storage upgrade prices, I still don't mind this base model machine at this price since the storage problem is definitely solvable outside of Apple's outrageous pricing. And it's probably recommended that you have more storage options than just the internal boot drive anyways. So obviously, if you know you're going to need a bigger internal boot drive, you can pay for one from Apple. So my recommendation is to stick with the base model and use external storage, network attached storage, or even cloud storage as much as you can to take advantage of the deal that is the base model. So the M4 Mac mini is already packing quite a punch for its size and price point. And remember, this is just the base model. There's also the M4 Pro 14 core model Mac mini starting at 1600 US dollars for that chip, which we've heard from Mac rumors has been benchmarked higher than the M2 Ultra Mac Studio, which is a configuration that starts at 4,000 US dollars. And that's today's money. Meanwhile, this machine is 600 bucks. So there's definitely been marked improvements in the M series Apple Silicon chips, and we're finally seeing those gains realized and what's ultimately the computer Apple has always wanted to make.